Amos chapter 5, verse number 4, the Bible says, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you for your excellent greatness. We thank you, Lord, that your name is holy. Lord, we thank you for the precious and wonderful word of God. Lord, we thank you for the truths contained therein, the precepts laid out, and the direction that it leads the soul of man. God, we are thankful that you are faithful and true. And God, we're thankful that you said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, God, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. But you also said that uh, you're coming back for your church. Uh, and Lord, I'm looking forward to that day when we get to go to heaven. Lord, either by the grave or by the rapture, it doesn't matter. And just knowing we get to go is, Lord, a blessing. Now, Father, we thank you for the good singing tonight. Lord, we ought to take inventory to see if our heart is right with God. Uh, Lord, if it is, then we'll be ready and excited about the hope uh, of checking out this world one of these days uh, and forever being with the Lord. Uh, now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would uh, continue to work uh, in our midst and in uh, 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 the avenue of this live stream. I pray you'd continue to work in our land. Uh, I pray you'd continue to work on the hearts of those in positions of authority. Uh, Father, I do pray uh, for this uh, uh, case that is before the federal court. I pray that the judge uh, would rule in favor of the church. Uh, uh, Lord, the, the Constitution is clear. Uh, God, I pray that uh, 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 these demigods that have been set up uh, uh, as uh, governors uh, and other leaders in these states uh, would lose battle after battle when it comes to our civil liberties and when it comes to our constitutional rights here in America. Lord, uh, we have faced this pandemic. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, they initially said things would be really closed down to the uh, curve was flattened. Uh, Lord, it's been more than flattened. Uh, it's been laid down low. And God, it's time to open up. Uh, there are folks who uh, have lost their jobs and been laid off. There are folks struggling uh, how to put food on their table. Uh, there are folks, uh, Lord, who are struggling uh, in other avenues. There are folks who are depressed. Uh, there are folks, uh, Lord, who have uh, 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 just gotten uh, 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 just so down and out. Uh, Lord, I pray for a little ray of sunshine now in this country of ours. Uh, but Lord, I pray more importantly for your people uh, that, Lord, we'd once again be able to assemble in the house of God uh, and truly worship you uh, in spirit and truth. Uh, I pray we'd see a move of God like we've only read about. Uh, I pray we'd see a Nineveh experience uh, where even the beasts get right with God. Uh, God, I pray that we'd see uh, uh, folks turn to God. Uh, I pray we'd see sinners saved. Uh, I pray we'd see righteousness reign in the streets of America again. Uh, I pray all the false narrative, uh, all the wicked politicians, uh, all the wicked media people, uh, I pray they get saved, get right with God, uh, and we'd see it fan throughout this land. Uh, we've seen what a virus can do throughout the world. Uh, Lord, I'd like to see what a move of God can do throughout the world. Uh, God, I pray, uh, Lord, you'd hear and you'd answer.
answer. Uh, Lord, we know the scripture says uh, that your arm's not short the way you cannot save. Uh, your ear's not inclined the way you cannot hear. Uh, God, you're still the God uh, of all possibility for nothing is impossible with thee. Uh, and God, we pray and implore uh, that God, you do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, now, Father, bless the reading of the Word of God. Uh, God, use this message to touch hearts. Uh, God, use this vessel, Lord, uh, to be an instrument in thy hand. Uh, and God, get glory. Uh, God, be elevated. Uh, God, be exalted. Uh, God, be worshipped. Uh, uh, because you are so worthy of it all. Uh, Father, we love you and we bless you. Lord, certainly if somebody's watching this unsaved, I pray they get saved. Uh, God, I pray for saved folks uh, that may be watching this, Lord. Uh, they wouldn't let distractions keep them from hearing what God says. Uh, they wouldn't be checking their phones. Uh, and they wouldn't be looking off and doing things in the corner and listening in the background. Uh, but they'd be focused on what God says. Uh, and God, I pray uh, many of our church families watching this uh, and their heart's not right with God. Uh, they're more interested in who's here or who's singing uh, rather than hearing what thus saith the Lord. Uh, God, I pray you'd smote them with conviction. Uh, I pray they get right with God. Uh, God, I pray you'd revive them their soul. Now, Father, have your will and way. We'll bless you. We'll praise you. We'll exalt you. Thank you, Lord, that the, uh, uh, there is a few here. Uh, and God, they do love you. And thank you, Lord, we can uh, uh, once again see what thus saith the Lord. Bless now. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I, I want to, you to notice uh, three things as a way of introduction to these verses. I want you to notice, first of all, the charge in verse number 4. The Bible says, For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. That's pretty plain. I don't need a modern version of the Bible to understand that. God said, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. That's the charge. He didn't say, Seek Kroger's seek Walmart. He didn't say seek uh, 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 protection from a virus with a vaccine. Uh, he didn't say uh, 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 seek more pay uh, uh, on your paycheck. Uh, he didn't say uh, uh, seek for an easier life. Uh, he said seek ye me and ye shall live. We see the charge. Uh, now notice the caution. Look what he says in verse 5. But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. For Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Uh, seek the Lord, and ye shall live. There he said it again. Lest he, break, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Uh, ye who turn judgment to wormwood, uh, and leave off righteousness in the earth. Uh, he cautions us uh, not to seek anything else, uh, but him. There's a charge to seeking. There's a caution not to put our affections uh, on anything other than him. Uh, now notice the clarity in verse number 8. Seek him. Again, the third time in these four verses, five verses, that he says seeking. Seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion. He's saying seek him that cast all the stars out there. The seven stars, the Big Dipper, the Orion, seek him. And turneth the shadow of death in the morning, into the morning. Huh? How many people thought they was going to die at night? Only for joy to come in the morning. Huh? And seek him that maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. I mean, uh, 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 the God of all glory says, seek him. And he says, the Lord is his name. Well, the clarity is the one who created everything and controls everything, the Lord is his name. We must seek him. Well, with that in mind, these three things he says in here, he says, seek ye me, seek the Lord, and seek him. And with God's help, I want to preach for a few minutes tonight on that thought, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. There are countless verses in the scriptures that mentions where to seek the Lord. If you just take those two words, seek and Lord, there's 87 verses. But if you take all the ones that says seek Him, 
or seek after him or seek uh, uh, the Holy One, uh, you'll find a much more, uh, a lot of verses on seeking the Lord. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.29 says, uh, But if from thence uh, thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. Uh, if thou seek him with all thine heart and uh, uh, with all thy soul. Uh, First Chronicles 16.11 uh, Seek the Lord in his strength. Uh, Seek his face continually. Uh, Lamentations 3.25 The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, uh, to the soul that seeketh him. Uh, Psalms 105 verse 4 uh, Seek the Lord uh, and his strength. Uh, seek his face uh, evermore. Uh, the Bible says, Seek and you shall find. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 uh, says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. Uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is uh, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Uh, we're not only commanded to seek him, uh, uh, we're told how to seek him, uh, and we're also expounded that he rewards them that seek him. Uh, we need to seek the Lord. Uh, let me give you a few things out of these verses on seeking the Lord. First of all, I want you to notice the rewarding, or the reward for seeking the Lord. In verse number 4, he says again, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. Can I say the reward for seeking the Lord is life. Jesus says, said that the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life uh, and life more abundantly. Uh, uh, can I say uh, uh, the Lord has an abundant life. Uh, there are a lot of God's people who are existing, uh, but not many who are living. Uh, I'm talking about living up to uh, uh, the expectation they can have in Christ. Uh, an abundant life. Uh, a life filled with joy and peace and love and long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. Uh, uh, a life uh, of uh, uh, rejoicing. A life of peace. A life of hope. Uh, a life measured with grace and mercy. Uh, uh, friend, there is an abundant life. Uh, a life Life to seek after uh, a life that if the world saw more of uh, they too would aspire unto God uh, hey there is a life the reward for seeking after God uh, is a life uh, that money can't buy uh, that Hollywood can't produce uh, that no one else can measure up to uh, it is the abundant life uh, there is a reward in seeking the Lord uh, Everybody knows 2 Chronicles 7, 14, And my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. If we will live that abundant life by seeking the Lord and doing what God says, he'd eradicate this virus in no time. He'd heal our land. My dear friends, there is a reward for seeking Him. I want you to notice, second of all, the revelation of what too often is sought after. Three times He tells us to seek Him. Now, can I say, if He only said it once, that's enough. Many times Jesus would say, Verily, verily, I say unto you. When He said, Verily, verily, twice, that means you better sit up and pay attention. But when God mentions three times that we're to seek Him, we ought to do more than pay attention. We need to put it into practice. But he tells us what too often is sought after, not him. We're commanded to seek him, but too often we seek other things. What do we seek? Well, we find it verse 5. He says, But seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Here we find revealed what too often is sought after. I'm talking about from God's, uh, God's people. Verse 4, he's speaking to the house of Israel. And can I say, in verse 5, he is talking to God's people, and he is, ex and he is warning them what to not seek after, and I find too often that's what people are seeking after. I'm talking about saved people. What are they seeking after? First of all, Bethel. Bethel in Scripture is always a type or a picture of the house of God. I've heard many people, and I've read many people's comments, and I've seen a whole lot of people complaining 
that we're not having church. I've heard people say, boy, I miss going to church. I've heard people say, I miss the house of God. You know what I'm not hearing, Brother Josh? I'm not hearing people say, boy, I miss God. Boy, we can't assemble in the midst of God's presence. He says, don't seek after Bethel. You know why God shut down church in the first place? It's because people were worshiping church. People took for granted church. It is all about church. And it's not about Him. I preached that message not long ago, Revelation 3, standing outside the door knocking. It's where He's at. He says, don't seek after Bethel. He said, Bethel, come to naught. Have we not seen that the last month? No church building. And yet, people still aren't seeking him. They're seeking who, who gets to come to, to, to the church house. He said, don't seek after Bethel, the house of God. Can I say, let me help you something. The facility we worship in, it's just brick and mortar. And when the rapture happens, this all goes back to dust. This is going to be destroyed. This isn't something to be worshipped. Oh, we've hallowed it to His name. And it is the place we've set aside to come and worship Him. But too many people are worshipping, they get to come to church. I've heard preacher, if I can just pull in the driveway... You know how stupid that sounds? It's just asphalt. There's nothing special about it. You know what makes everything special around here? Him. There are people who seek the church house. You say, oh, preacher, I didn't mean that. Oh, you did. Because if you meant you come to worship God, you'd say, I can't wait to meet with God. And I said, he said not to seek Bethel. He also said not to seek Gilgal. Now the word Gilgal, or the name Gilgal, literally means a circle. It figuratively means a circle of friends or fellowship. Well, I've heard a lot. I miss our church family. I miss seeing y'all too. But maybe God's not allowed us to come together because that's what it's all about. It's the fellowship. It's about getting together with the church family. It's not about God. We're to seek God. You see, when we come, we come together and the Holy Ghost indwells us. If we come together in the right spirit and the right motive to worship Jesus, God shows up. But too often it's all about coming together and seeing each other. He says, seek you me. Amen. Seek the Lord. Seek him. Don't seek Gilgal, the fellowship. You don't want that. Why? Because he said, Gilgal shall go into captivity. I don't know about you, but I felt like I've been in prison the last four weeks. We haven't had fellowship. Maybe fellowship was taking the place of the Lord. And that's why he shut her down. Too often people seek getting to come to church. Seeking the house of God. Boy, if I can just come in the doors. If your heart's right with God, you can walk through the doors of Walmart and still worship God. Oh, if I can just get around God's people. And that's your problem. You esteem God's people higher than you esteem God. But then he says, not to seek after Beersheba. What is Beersheba? Beersheba is a well. That represents the blessings. Too many people are seeking the blessings of God. They want health. They want wealth. Uh, they want 
nicer vehicles, better homes. They want uh, uh, all kinds of things uh, that eases their life, that helps their life. They want God to, uh, to bless them and meet all their needs. And God says, you need to seek me, not the blessings. Too many people are seeking God's hand and not seeking God's heart. Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto thee. That's our problem. We want the things without God. No wonder God shut it all down. Can I help you something? When you have him, you get all the things too. Hmm? Matter of fact, when you get consumed with him, nothing else really matters. Well, I read something this week tore me up. Leader Ravenhill said that our God is a consuming fire. And when you get full of God, you can't help but be on fire. God help us that we're not a consuming fire today. You know why? We haven't sought God. We've sought everything in the name of God. We've sought everything but God. God said, seek ye me. We see the reward for seeking him. We see the revelation of what too often is sought after. Notice the ramifications of not seeking the Lord. Look at verse number 6. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Uh, you see, if we don't seek the Lord, we stop living spiritually. And what we do is we tempt God to break out like fire in the house of Joseph. If you study out the house of Joseph, what that is referring to is Israel major. That is uh, dealing with the nation of Israel. The house of Israel is dealing with the spiritual aspect. Uh, uh, the uh, house of Joseph is dealing with the, the nation itself. Uh, he said that if you don't seek me, uh, uh, not only are you not going to live spiritually, uh, uh, but you're tempting me uh, uh, to destroy the nation. And is that not what is happening to our country? Hmm. The ramifications is he'll pour out a fire in the nation the house of Joseph and he said and Bethel couldn't quench it who's Bethel? the house of God and when God begins to judge the nation the people of God hadn't sought after God and they're not going to be able to stop it can I say I've heard for, for years well, let's get on fire for God. Well, if you seek God, you'll be on fire for Him. If you don't seek Him, you're going to get on fire for God. You're going to be on fire in His judgment. We see the ramifications of not seeking the Lord. The Lord gets angry and He sends judgment. Mercy and grace have been exhausted and judgment falls. I have told you from the beginning of this, all this pandemic was an avenue to hurt our president and his chance of re-election. Every day and every week, more and more science, more and more evidence comes out that this COVID-19 is no more dangerous than the flu. 80% of the people who have passed away have done it in nursing homes or long-term care facilities. Can I say, is it contagious? Sure, so is the flu. Can I say this? That all the initial reports coming from all the people that are supposed to know this stuff, the CDC, Center for Disease Control, uh, the World Health Organization, all these people we come to find out they've been on the take. And uh, they gave the president some very bad information. You remember when they come out and said that two million people in America were going to die? Then all of a sudden it got down to 200,000. That's a big drop. Well, it went from two million to a million to 200,000, then 100,000, and is right now uh, 50,000. And now each and every day they're readjusting the stats because uh, when they really look at it, some of these people that have died that they actually listed as COVID-19 deaths weren't COVID-19 deaths. 
And why? Because there's been an attack in our nation from within. Alexis de Tocqueville, a French statesman, statesman came to America in the 1800s. He was privileged to see everything, and he went back and he made a statement. He said, America is not great because of her matchless constitution. America is not great because of her wonderful industry. America is not great because of all the natural resources. He said, I realized America was great because America was good. He said, I did not realize that until I went into the churches and heard righteousness flame from the pulpits. He said, when America ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. We have not sought God, and now judgment has befallen our nation. Our nation is divided. Many that run America from a legislative state want us to become part of a global economy. And anything that stands in opposition to the global economy, they seek to destroy. We have a president who ran on a platform, it's time to make America great again. And they have despised him every step of the way. They have despised Christian people every step of the way. Remember Obama made fun of us. Hillary made fun of us. Now liberals make fun of us. Call us non-essential. And can I say, why shouldn't they? How essential have we been? What difference have we made in this world? How have we impacted our communities? We haven't done a very good job because we haven't sought the Lord. Can I say, the independent Baptist movement was great when it had to meet in the storefronts in these cities, in the inner cities. And they preached the word of God and they believed God. But when we moved out to the suburbs and we started building edifices and we started padding up the pews and we started having all the conveniences of life, we quit seeking God. And now we paid the price. I want you to see the results of not seeking the Lord. And this is why people can watch a live stream program and look around and see somebody there who's already been here and then get all bent out of shape. It's right here. It's in verse number 7. It says, Ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth. What has happened when you quit seeking the Lord, you quit seeking His holiness. You quit seeking His righteousness. You quit seeking His predominance in your life. You quit seeking everything about God. And so the natural metamorphosis of that is you turn into wormwood. What is wormwood? It's bitterness. The righteousness and holiness of God is turned into bitterness. And you sit and watch a program and you get bitter because somebody's here and you're not here. You look around when, you, when we are able to assemble and somebody gets God on them and you get bitter because God's not on you. Somebody gets blessed and gets a new car and you get bitter because they got a nicer car than you got. Somebody gets to sing and you don't get to sing and you get bitter. Somebody gets mentioned during the sermon. You don't get mentioned. You get bitter. You know why? Because you haven't sought God. Can I help you with folks that seek God? They don't care who God uses. They're just glad to be around God. Hmm? The result of not seeking the Lord is bitterness. You know what's wrong with a lot of God's people? They're stubbed up on God and they're full of bitterness. They look at what they don't have and they get mad instead of looking at God and seeing all they have in Him. You realize when Noah got off the ark, he owned the whole world. And when we get off this ark and land in glory, we'll own it all too, friend. Hmm? So many people, as I preached the other night, want an easy path. Instead of having a path that exalts the Lord. Let me say this lastly, because I've said a mouthful in this message. We need to seek the Lord. We find there's a reminder of why we are to seek the Lord. 
verse number 8. Seek him. Who? The one that maketh the seven stars and Orion and turneth the shadow of death into, into the morning and maketh the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. We're reminded that we are to seek him because he is God. He is in control. He can make the sun stop shining and he can make night turn into day. He can take the seas of the earth, uh, of the, of the, he take the waters of the seas and he can flood the earth. He's the one that tells it when to rain. He's the one that tells the sun to shine. He's the one that flung the stars out on nothing. He's the one that grows the flowers. Uh, he's the one that sends the honeybees by the flowers uh, so that they can pollinate the rest of the world so we can enjoy not only uh, vegetation, but we can enjoy uh, a, a, a good steak every now and then, a good chicken leg every now and then, uh, a good pork chop every now and then. Uh, God provides it all. Uh, God feeds everything all the time. Uh, uh, God neither slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, God takes care of all the galaxies. Uh, God takes care of all the earth. Uh, uh, God cared enough about you to die for you. Uh, God made a way that you had a brain enough to understand that he died for you and that he'd save you when you called on him he saved you hey he not only saved you he secured you he's going to prepare a place for you the Lord is his name hey he is worthy of your praise he is worthy of all your attention and he says seek him that we may live we're reminded why we're to seek him because he's God let me ask you something Throughout all this pandemic, how much time have you really spent with God? How much have you really sought Him? How much have you talked to Him? How much have you read uh, the Scriptures so He can talk to you? How much have you been focused on Him and the things of God? How much have you sought Him? You know why he gave me this message tonight? Because we haven't sought him. We seek church. We seek fellowship of God's people. We seek revival. We seek going out knocking on doors. We seek children's club. We seek all these things. Can I help you something? You can seek all that and do it without God. And that's the indictment of many churches today. They operate, but not under the unction of the Holy One of Israel. If we start seeking Him, there's not a government in the world that can stop Him moving in us. So the charge tonight really is, seek Him. Seek the Lord. Oh, He longs to hear from you. He longs for your attention. He longs to fill your sadness with gladness. He longs to walk with you and fellowship with you and to speak whispers of heavenly love into your ears. He longs to give you peace that passes all understanding. He longs to give you discernment. He longs to give you hope. He longs to give you something far more than the petty little ideologies we have about church it's all about him mm -mm. no wonder the psalmist said what is man what is man that thou visiteth him and the son of man who are we that God would even care about us when you start seeking him and seeing how high and holy he really is it puts you into perspective of who you really are. The truth of the matter is, if we come seeking him, we wouldn't come be bopping through the doors of the church. We'd come crawling in the church, ever humbled that God would even care to know our name. God help us to learn to seek him while he may be found. Because, friend, this might be the final final, final warning from God. Not only for sinners to repent, but for God's people to get right 
before the Lord comes back. God doesn't ever play games. And he certainly isn't now. So it's time God's people quit playing games. It's time that we start seeking him. Thirsting after him. Hungering for him. Longing for him. And my dear friends, then we'll have him. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Lord, what a stern message from Amos right before Israel had to go into captivity because they did not seek you. Bethel did come to naught. The house of Joseph was set on fire because your people sought pleasure in this world more than they sought the presence of God. God, it has been often said that history repeats itself. Lord, I pray from this point forward that would not be the case. I pray your people would truly begin to seek you. Lord, they truly have a burning within their soul to have your presence. Lord, the statesman so many years ago cried, give me liberty or give me death. Lord, I pray your people would cry, Lord, give me your presence or give me death. God, help us to yearn for that consuming fire of God uh, within us. God, help us to be not satisfied with anything less than your touch and your presence in our hearts and in our lives. God, uh, help us to submit and yield ourselves and then create in us an appetite for holy manna and that manna of you. Now, God, thank you for those that have sought you and those that have prayed, those that long to come back to church, not for the fellowship, not for the building, uh, not for the blessing, but to come back so they can get closer to you. God, thank you for those that do sacrifice and that those that do, oh Lord, put you first. And God, I pray that, Lord, all would do so and we truly would see a heaven-sent revival in these days. Lord, thank you for these few that got to come. Again, thank you for the good singing. God, thank you for those that uh, Lord, labor and never, ever seen those that are running the sound and the, uh, the video equipment, those that clean the church just as if it would be full, those that scrub the bathrooms just as if they'd be full, those that uh, make sure the grounds are meticulous just as if many would show up to see it, uh, Lord, those that have sacrificed without being prodded or threatened we haven't had to send envelopes for folks to send in their tithes we're thankful for folks that have not only tithed but have sacrificed and given offering Lord we're thankful for those that Lord have put you first in their lives now, Lord help us all uh, to put you not only first but to make you our life and then the world would know just how essential church really is now, God, get glory. God, open this thing up soon. And then, God, open the eyes to unbelievers. The power and presence of God will bless you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we do ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for watching tonight. Please be praying. Please be seeking the Lord. Wouldn't it be wonderful Sunday morning we will be able to come? and see just how big a God we really serve. I'm longing for the day when he shows up in a powerful, mighty way in the midst of his, his people once again. Maybe this Sunday. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I believe he's able. Do you? Why don't you pray to that end? Do pray one for another. Do keep looking up. We know he's coming. And make certain you're ready when he comes. Seek him while he may be found. We will certainly... Give him the glory for what great things he does. Again, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. And again, keep looking up. 
Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.